Oh yeah, and on to that question of the day. Here we go. So uh, could you help fill in the matrix? Here we go, running shoe matrix early 2020. What do I mean by the matrix? Okay, now you might have to close your eyes for a second. Can you picture the last time you walked into a running shoe store? Can you picture that, huh? Look at that wall of shoes. What is it? It's overwhelming. I don't know about you, but when I go into running shoe stores, I'm overwhelmed. Like there's just so many different options now out there on the marketplace and that fit into your different into your running shoe rotation. I made a vlog three months ago. It has almost 85,000 views all about how to build your running shoe rotation. Well, this vlog today is building off of that vlog. Now I have a three-step process for building out the running shoe rotation. Here you go. It's pretty simple, really. Do you need a road or trail shoe? Do you need a neutral or stability shoe? And what task within your training plan is the shoe uh, going to accomplish, okay? And let me explain, is it an easy day shoe? Is it a tempo day shoe? Is it a threshold day shoe? Is it a middle distance or long run shoe? Is it a interval shoe, you know, going to the track or to your cross country course and doing intervals, okay? That's what I mean by different tasks within your training plan. And now the reason I'm making this vlog today is that I think on Twitter is probably the number one spot where the running shoe conversation is happening. Just so you know, it's also happening on Facebook, a little bit on Instagram. Uh, so I want to make I want to make this vlog to be able to send out to people to help them make their running shoe purchasing deci decisions in early 2020. Now, keep in mind, I cannot run in every single shoe out there on the marketplace. There's just not enough time. There's frankly, my legs wouldn't be able to handle the amount of volume I would need to do in order to train in every single shoe out there. Remember the wall. The running shoe wall at the running shoe store, overwhelming. So like for example, the Clifton lineup from Hoka has been, has, is left out of this conversation because why it just hasn't worked its way in to my rotation, okay? So just wanna make that clear. And now the other side of the graph or the other side of the matrix is gonna be made up of how does the shoe feel underfoot? What is the landing like? Is it responsive? So here's the categories I've come up with. Is it a soft landing? Is it a firm landing? Is it responsive? Is it ground contact feel? Is it high cushion, okay? And now I could do this by weight, I could do this by durability, we could do this by price, but we're gonna save that for another day. Okay? And now as we go through this matrix, I've got notes in front of me, so I'm gonna be glancing down at my computer and I'll stop to talk about a few of the shoes every now and then, but if I did every shoe, we'd be here till midnight. So I'm gonna keep it moving if you know what I mean. So for my first column, easy day shoe with a soft landing. Nike Pegasus 37, 28 millimeter in the heel, 18 in the forefoot, $120. Moving along, easy day shoe with a firmer landing. Actually, I've got a few out here to show you. So next up, so here's the Peg 37. Next up, the Skechers Go Run Ride 8. Yes, an easy day shoe, but a little firmer landing there through that midsole, okay? So we're looking at 30 in the heel, 24 in the forefoot for that six millimeter drop, $115. All right, moving on, responsive. I don't have a shoe. Why? Because on easy days, I'm not looking for a responsive shoe. Does that make sense? I'm looking to bop along. Just go nice and easy. Even do, yes, for me, a little bit of heel striking. I know, I know. Even on easy days, I like a good heel strike every now and then. Moving on to the ground contact for easy day shoe, Saucony Convara 11, 25 and 21 heel, 25, four foot 21. $110 right now, a lower stack height, good ground contact feel, but enough um, give in that midsole that I'm still uh, putting it into the easy day category. I actually really like the Kinvara 11. I was unable to take it to 50 miles, not because I didn't like the shoe, but basically just it was bumped out of the rotation because of other shoes working its way in. Love, love, love this shoe. Okay, moving on to high cushion. Where is it? The Hoka Rincon 2 or 1, frankly, and I actually don't even know where it is. Hoka Rincon 2, butter my bread. I really enjoy the shoe. I think it, it also is almost a tweener, meaning it could be an easy day shoe or potentially a tempo day shoe because it is so lightweight. So it's a tweener, all right? So 32 in the heel, 27 in the forefoot, $115. Hoka Rincon one or two, both will do the trick for you. Okay, moving on to the next column, 
Tempo Day shoes. Okay, back to another tweener conversation on Nike Pegasus 37. Yes. Um, now, it's a little heavy for a Tempo Day, but uh, because of that airbag through the forefoot, I think this shoe with the React midsole, the new React midsole, has really taken a step forward where it could be an easy day shoe, but also a, a gentle Tempo Day shoe, okay? And we'll get to the next column in a second, Threshold. Um, so anyway, there you go. Nike Pegasus 37, already told you the price point. Oh, okay, I'll mention one other. I have to mention one other. Where is it? Where is it? Yes, the Brooks Hyperion Tempo as far as a soft landing. There you go, soft landing, absolutely. Brooks Hyperion Tempo, I ran in this, was it yesterday? I'm excited about this shoe, actually, really excited. So we're looking at 26 in the heel, 18 in the forefoot, $115. All right, soft Tempo Day shoe, Brooks Hyperion, and the Nike Peg 37. Brooks Hyperion Tempo, significantly lighter, just so you know. Okay, moving on now to a firm landing for a Tempo Day shoe. This was a tough one. Oh, I ended up not really enjoying this shoe, but it's the Hoka Mach 3, 27 in the heel, 22 in the forefoot. We're looking at $140. It just was firm. It's a, I, and a lot, and I'm not the only one that think this. It's just a firm landing. Hoka Mach 3 wasn't at the top of my list. Okay, ooh, I forgot about this one. And you know what? I'm gonna try and find an image of it to put it on the screen. It's the Asics Evo Ride for a responsive tempo ride. Responsive tempo, Asics Evo Ride. I really enjoyed this shoe actually. 28 in the heel, 23 in the forefoot, $120 responsive tempo ride. Okay, moving on. Tempo as well, ground contact, the Skechers Horizon Vanish. Here it is. Skecher, nope, there, no, there it is. Okay, here we go. Skechers Horizon Vanish, 20 millimeter stack height in the heel, 16 in the forefoot. The lightest shoe I own for training shoes, okay? I love this thing. $100, you can't beat that. Not a great lockdown, just so you know. It's a very loosey-goosey upper, but as far as a tempo day shoe with good ground contact feel because uh, that stack height is so low, love, love, love. Okay, moving on to high cushion tempo day shoe. High cushion tempo day shoe. You know what it is. The A6 Nova Blast. 37 millimeter in the heel, 27 in the forefoot. Now, as far as stability through your foot strike, uh, I could see how this shoe, for me it was okay, but I do know some people feel a little unstable in this shoe. I get it, um, so keep that in mind. But 37, 27, coming in at $130. This is one of my favorite shoes thus far in 2010 and 2020. Okay, moving on to, and I should mention the pacing for a tempo day for me, is right around six minutes a mile, okay? Easy days, more like that 8.15 to nine minute pace, okay, roughly, 8.15 to nine minute pace. And then threshold days for me, we're looking at about 5.20 to 5.30 a mile, per, you know, approximately. And that's the column we are on now. So we're going soft first. Yes, indeed, it's the Adidas Boston 9. Where is it? I know it's out here, Adidas Boston 9. 26 in the heel, 16 in the forefoot for $90. Moving on to firm. Oh, okay, this is the only shoe that I went back to 2019 because I just couldn't think of in 2020 a firm threshold shoe. Firm meaning a threshold pace, so faster than tempo days, but a firm landing, okay? It's the Carbon Rocket from Hoka. Absolutely. Uh, I just couldn't think of another one from 2020 where it was such a firm ride. Didn't love how firm this was, but anyway, it's a carbon fiber plate shoe. I should also mention that. 28 in the heel, 27 in the forefoot for just a little teeny one millimeter drop coming in at $160. And moving on next in the threshold category for responsive shoe, 100%. Oh man, this is a great shoe. This Saucony Endorphin Pro. That's right, a carbon fiber plate shoe. We're looking at an eight millimeter drop, 35 in the heel, 27 in the forefoot, $200. Saucony Endorphin Pro, very responsive. Oh, love this shoe. Oh, and that the resiliency of the carbon fiber plate is still there. Still there, everyone. Okay, moving on to ground contact. So if you like to be a little lower to the ground, feel the ground under your feet. Here we go. Actually, 
a very exciting shoe for me. In fact, I'm going to train more in this shoe, the Adidas SL20. Adidas SL20, lower to the ground. We've got 27 in the heel, which is actually pretty high, but 17 in the forefoot, so a 10 millimeter drop. So 17, that's pretty lean, but I would absolutely use this shoe on a threshold day. And we're looking at a $85. $85. That's awesome. Good work, Adidas. Adidas SL20. And then, of course, the high cushion shoe for the threshold category has to be the Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent. You, you knew that was coming. So, ridiculous stack height. I still am getting mixed signals as to the official stack height. I mean, it. Oh, I need a laser. I need a laser, everybody. Somebody send me a laser. So 30, I'm going with 39 in the heel, 31 in the forefoot for that eight millimeter drop. So very high stack height, but it would be, now this is a racing shoe. You all know that. Uh, but if you want a shoe for fast threshold days with high cushion, I personally will save this shoe for uh, race days. Uh, but I would save the shoe for race days. So anyway, there you go. Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent 200. And seventy-five dollars, two hundred and seventy-five. Okay. And now moving on to that next column within the running shoe matrix, early twenty twenty, is intervals. And guess what? I'm going to leave it blank. I don't feel confident enough giving you shoe ideas for going to the track and doing an interval session. Why? I just haven't been on the track a ton in the last six months. I have been on the track, but not a ton. So we're going to save that for another day. Sound good? Okay. Next, long run or middle distance run. So again, I do long runs, but I also do middle distance runs. They're very similar, similar pacing. For me, we're looking at uh, 6.30 pace to 7.15 pace, roughly uh, per mile. And so here we go, long run, run, long run shoes. So soft landing for a long run. Oh, major asterisk, major asterisk. I actually have not, I'm just being very transparent, I have not running this shoe yet. It's the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. It's on my list. I just haven't worked it in yet. But look, I can, it's so soft, it's almost a little concerning. But look at that, how soft that is. So stay tuned. I will put this into the rotation very, very soon. I'm excited. Definitely could be a long run shoe. It is a carbon fiber plate, just so you know. New Balance Fuel Cell TC, 36, 26, $200. There you go. Okay, moving on to a firmer ride. Okay, one of my favorite shoes. Actually, I take this. All right, this is one more shoe from 2019, the Asics Glide Ride. It's a firmer ride, but I love this shoe. You all know how much I love this shoe. Asics Glide Ride, 35 in the heel, 29 in the forefoot for that six millimeter drop coming in at $150. Okay, moving on to responsive. We're looking at the Asics Meta Racer. Uh-oh, back-to-back Asics Meta Racer. So I'm actually, the Asics Meta Racer for a long run shoe is actually gonna cover two uh, categories within the matrix for long run. Does that make sense? So responsive and ground contact, responsive and ground contact. Now listen, this is a racing shoe, okay? I don't think this would be my go-to option for let's say a half marathon or marathon. In fact, I know it would not be, all right? And yes, carbon fiber plate in there. Um, I, it wouldn't be my first option for racing, but for long runs, it could be an option for you. So I'm putting it for responsive and ground contact, lower stack height, absolutely. So we're looking at 24 in the heel, 15 in the forefoot, 24 in the heel, 15 in the forefoot. So I want to make sure you know, like your feet need to be resilient if you're putting this shoe on your feet for a long run. Don't just go put the shoe on for a long run if you don't feel like your body is ready for it. You're gonna work in this shoe. That's what I found out when I was training in this about two months ago. It, uh, you're working, okay? So 24, 15 coming in at $200. Asics Meta Racer, but it could be an option. Just putting it out there, it could be an option. And last but not least, yes, we're gonna go back to Hoka for a long run high cushion shoe, the Hoka Elevon 2. Hoka Elevon 2, early 2020, long run shoe. Um, this shoe did well, but it's a little heavy, all right? If you like a lighter shoe, again, we're not talking too much about weight today, but it, did, it definitely could do the trick for a long run shoe with higher cushion. All right, sound good? We're looking at 35 in the heel, 30 in the forefoot, coming in at 116 dollars. We did it. We did it. All right. Early 2020 uh, running shoe matrix. I hope that helps. All right. And I hope all the graphics and titles helped as well. 
go back into the uh, go back into this video and listen. So what I plan to do is make another vlog like this in probably like four or five months from now. Because guess what? There's always running shoes arriving on the marketplace. So I'm going to need to continue to update the matrix. All right. Does that make sense? Because um, we just don't know like what's coming down the pike from all these different, like it's amazing. Like Asics in 2019 released so many shoes, new shoes that no one had ever seen before. And I think it's only going to continue to happen with running shoe companies out there as they figure out different ways to, yes, innovate in their rotation. Sound good, everyone? Oh yeah, and on to that question of the day. Here we go. So uh, could you help fill in the matrix and add to the matrix, meaning a long run and a soft landing, okay? Or tempo and a high cushion, okay? So what shoes would you add to the matrix? Select one box to fill in, whether it's easy day and responsive, actually not response, easy day and firm, or threshold and ground contact feel, whatever, however you want to fill in the matrix, let us know your thoughts as to what shoes could also work in the rotation down in the comments. You guys rock. I hope you gleaned a little bit of value from today's vlog. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching, as always. Love you guys, love you guys. That was fun, that was fun. All right, we're gonna toss it back to, yes, the running shoe rotation vlog. Right there, right there. Running shoe rotation, butter that bread, butter that bread. All day long, everybody. All right, onward and upward. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.